Hello once again, people of the internet. Um, first of all, uh, thank you all 45 people who watched my last video, um, most of which were probably my aunties, but also one person from Canada who left a comment asking about my hearing aids. So I thought I'd do that. Um, so, um, first hearing aid, so I'm on my second pair of hearing aids now because I tried one and it didn't really work and then I got another one. So I'm going to talk about that. Right, so um, the first ones I got um, were the Phonak Audio Paradise. Um, I had a few issues with those, not because there was anything wrong with them, um, but first of all, when I got them, I was told that I was right on the kind of borderline for being too deaf for them to do anything like they they're not the most powerful hearing aids you can get so they were like I mean they're not they're not like very weak ones but I'm just very deaf so um the the kind of maximum volume was only like just loud enough for me to be able to hear it um but they said that like I, I could give them a go so I did um first issue I had was um the kind of ends that went in my ear they didn't have an ear mold they had um like a generic they call them tulips um it was just like a kind of like a headphone end like and like an earbud sort of thing and that you put in your ears um for the sound um and that i was allergic to the material of it so um it was really sore and um my face came up in a rash and my ears were really itchy, um, so that didn't work too well. Um, so I got um, like impressions of my ears taken and they gave me some new, um, they were called seashells, which was like an acrylic custom ear mo piece mould thing. It wasn't like a full ear mould, but it, they're called like the letter C and then shell. Um, if you want to Google that. Um, those I wasn't allergic to, which was great, but um, one of them broke, the left one. The connection between the wire and the, uh, like something, because these, the Phonak Audio Paradise, they're a receiver in canal type. So you've got the bit behind your ear, but then instead of a tube going down to an ear mold, it has a wire and the, um, earpiece was kind of fixed to that wire and something in that wire and earpiece wasn't wasn't working so the sound just there was no sound out of one ear um so that wasn't great um and also um I had a massive issue with them whistling really really badly um I'm not sure if, um like every time I moved my mouth it would push the ear in the ear molds out of my ears and it would whistle and I can't hear the whistling so everyone had to tell me to like push the ear pieces back in um if you watch my last video you can see me like pushing them back in um obviously I don't know whether it was whistling or not but I could feel them coming out so I was pushing them back in in case it was whistling um so at that point we decided to to um swap also because I, I didn't have a lot of hearing with them because they weren't powerful enough. So we decided to swap them with um, a different type, which is the Phonak Naida, um, which it's spelt N-A-I um, with an accent, D-A. Um, and they're also by Phonak. And they are a behind the ear type. And I was given the kind of high powered ones, which are like the most powerful hearing aids that Phonak do. Um, and these ones, um, you have a full ear mould and a tube and um, a larger piece behind the ear. And um, these ones I've had, you know, quite a good result with. Um, the only thing that's not great about them is um, these ones you can't get in rechargeable ones. Um, the Phonak Audio Paradise I had before, they were rechargeable, which was really nice. Um, so yeah that was really nice these ones have they've got bluetooth um the audio paradise and these ones got bluetooth they um so you can 
hear phone calls through them. Not that I can hear on the phone, even with them. But, um, you know, if you could, if, you know, if you have a bit more hearing than I do. Um, and the, so these ones take batteries um, and they've also got a tube and a full ear mould. Um, I will take them out and show you, well, take one out and show you. Um, so this bit goes behind your ear. You've got a tube and you've got an ear mould. Usually this bit's um, clear, but um, I wanted to be fancy, so I got blue. Um, also, I was told that the clear can kind of um, discolour and look a bit funny over time. So um, I decided to go for blue just for that as well. So a tip for anyone um, that wants wants to um, get this, you know, getting hearing aids with a full ear mould, see if you can get it in a colour because um, over time that might hold up a bit better. Obviously I haven't had these very long, so I cannot 100% vouch for that. So um, the battery, um, there's like a little door here and you just open it and there's the battery in there. Um, these are the high powered ones, so they take larger batteries than um, so they take larger batteries than other types of hearing aids. So um, this is kind of worst case scenario, really. Um, if you've got um, a bit more hearing than I do, you might be able to get like really sm small rechargeable ones with just like a little wire. Um, and not have to worry about the batteries or anything like that. Um, but even if you have to get these, it's not that much of a big deal. I mean, um, a lot of people who've had to get hearing aids when they were young from my online looking um, found it quite kind of emotional or like difficult because of, you know, people think it makes you like old. But um, to be honest, I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't that bothered. Maybe it was easier for me because like it wasn't like I really had to make a decision. It's not like I could kind of hear, but I might have been a bit better with hearing aids. It was like a, do you want something or nothing? <laughs> so you get, yeah, I'll have some hearing, please. Um, so yeah, that's why. So it, it, I didn't find it like an emotional thing. I mean, no one's, no one's like said anything mean or anything, um, because, you know, most people aren't like that, and um, and if there are like, you know, the people that are like that, I don't associate with them because why would I? I wouldn't have liked them. I wouldn't like them anyway. Um, so um, yeah and these ones don't whistle at all really. Well no one's told me they're whistling so I'm assuming they're not whistling. Um, the batteries they just come like this. Um, so they're in like a little spinny thing and then you just take them out of this like flap at the back. Um, I re this is really clever packaging a moment to appreciate that. Um, the size of batteries that these, these take are 675, um, which I think is the largest type of battery. So this is worst case scenario. Some of the batteries that I've seen like in the shop, they're literally like probably not even half the size of one of these. Like, um, So if you're lucky you might be able to get rechargeable ones or ones with really really tiny batteries and if they've got smaller batteries, they won't be as big behind your ear either, so they might be a bit more subtle. But to be honest, you know, even if you can't get the more subtle ones, um, if you've got long hair, you can put your hair over it, and um, you know, no one cares. <laughs> um, also, they might look a bit more subtle if you did get the clear ear molds, um, but I don't really care about that, <laughs> to be honest. Um, also, another thing to mention is overnight when I take these off, um, I've got uh, one of these. It's a hearing aid dehumidifier thing. I just got this off Amazon. It wasn't very expensive. It was about five pounds. Um, obviously, like Phonak and stuff makes their own ones. But to be honest, this, those ones you need to like change a different thing in them like every week and. This one, you can use it for six months and then you just get rid of the whole thing. So I thought that seemed a bit less of a faff. Um, so every night I take these off, I um, wipe down the ear mould um, with like a tissue or a bit of toilet roll that I keep next to my bed because I'm classy like that. 
and um, open the door to the battery compartment and I just put them in here overnight with the lid closed and um, you know just let them in the morning I just take them out and turn them on and put them back in so that works really well um, also there's an app that you can get if you've got phone app ones a lot of other companies do it as well an app that you can get for your phone that acts as a remote control so you can turn them up and down um, or like set it to different settings for different environments um, to be honest I haven't really used that because it's got like an auto sense setting where it set, senses what environment you're in and just changes the settings automatically um, I've found that to be pretty good myself um, so I just use that um, but you know it's nice it's nice to have um, in case you do need it obviously I haven't been um, in any really weird environments where I might have wanted a really special situation as of yet so maybe maybe I'll find that more useful in the future if I do I'll let you know um, so that's how far I've got with hearing aids yeah perfect oh also I'd like to make a quick book recommendation because I'm reading a really good book at the moment I just thought I'd share it with everyone um, it's called Humankind um, by Roger Bregman and um, my um, my auntie got this for me and I'm really enjoying it. I'm about halfway through. Um, yeah, so I recommend that. Well, thank you um, all 45 people that watched my last video and yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Talk to my phone soon. <laughs> um, thank you. Bye.